Good morning, my name is Giovanni Stringa, I'm a journalist at Editorial della Sera. Uh, with me is Mr. Jörg Eichendorf, Chief Sustainability Officer in Deutsche Bank. Uh, Mr. Eichendorf, climate change has disappeared for, from many public discussions, not all, but many. Uh, does this sound true for Deutsche Bank? Was it just a buzzword and we are back to business as usual or there's something different in it? something more substantial. It's definitely something very much substantial because uh, we are talking about probably the issue that will keep us busy for the next decades. Um, we are talking about, um, when we talk about sustainability, we, talk, we know exactly right now that this has transformational or even disruptive character. We see that uh, in the future, we definitely know that uh, scientists clear make very clear that we in the future will see more catastrophes. Uh, this year, probably in 10 years' time, we will look back into to a mild year, and this means we will see a lot of change. We will see a lot of need for transformation, and these, this change will come in a disruptive manner, and the less we transform, the more disruptive it will eventually be. So it is while people don't, and, 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 and you have to really differentiate, while, while um, CEOs of global companies may not talk that much about sustainability, we definitely know that they think a lot about it because they are aware of this disruptive change that, and these disruptive risks we, we are seeing. And they are also aware of the opportunity because if you understand that the investment need of our economies is extremely high in in the for the transformation, probably even more than in the IA in the artificial artificial intelligence space, or for research and development. So everybody knows that there is a huge business opportunity also. And what we see in Deutsche Bank that our sustainable finance volumes are growing and they are growing steadily. Um, we have uh, very encouraging numbers. Just if I look back to the last quarter, we have. We have great transactions where we support the transition, be it that we um, have um, a transition with the Italian refrigerating company, EPTA, um, where, we, where we are engaged in the sustainable uh, supply chain finance. Um, or if we talk about um, the first green bond for the city of Munich, the first green bond for a city in Germany, overall, an inaugural green bond. Or if you then think about our financing of 10,000 streetlights in Senegal. So they are all over the world, um, or for like battery storage in the United States. All of that happened in just a few months. So we see that it's picking up. We see this is um, on everybody's mind. And only that the people don't talk about it, only that other topics has pushed it a little bit aside, serious topics like the Russian attack on Ukraine or what we're seeing right now in the Middle East. All of this definitely is more in the headlines. But at the same time, those who take the decisions in companies and in governments, they know that they have a lot of risks and opportunities ahead of them and they better get prepared. How does Deutsche Bank integrate sustainability criteria into its lending and investment decisions to support the transition? Can you give us some examples? Happy to give you some examples. We, we um, on the one hand, I just talked about the transactions we are doing. We, these transactions are backed by frameworks. So everybody knows what we understand in Deutsche Bank as um, environmentally sound, as socially exclusive, and what the transactions, what we regard, what we count against our 500 billion target. We have um, we have uh, committed to um, and have the target of, of uh, facilitating 500 billion of financing and investment from 2020 till the end of 2025, a hugely ambitious target. We are right now at roughly 350 billion, which is a remarkable number. And this is underpinned by a good framework. We also have guidelines for sectors and these sector guidelines mean that we check on certain transactions with the due diligence and environmental and social due diligence, does this really fit into our criteria? 
And are these transactions in line with our policies, with our, uh, with our guidelines? So we do this. And the other way we are looking deeply, we made this net zero commitment as founding member of the Net Zero Banking Alliance. And there you can see that we have now seven sector pathways. Um, we are committed uh, to um, these sector pathways. The management board compensation is partially linked to achieving these sector pathways for oil and gas, for coal, for utilities, automotive, steel, shipping. And, and this we are doing um, very transparently. And this is linked to our lending. And we are doing a lot of all, many of these um, rules also then apply for investments. There we have an ESG investments framework. And the important thing is that these things are transparent so people can understand what we uh, regard as environmentally sound, socially inclusive, and what is outside of what we want to finance because it may be harmful. Uh, what uh, future trends in sustainable finance does uh, Deutsche Bank anticipate? Uh, and, uh, and how are you preparing to yourself to address them in the future? First of all, it's all about the transition. And if you look at the transition, we know that there's a huge investment need just in the European Union, we assume an, an investment in a scale of 600 billion, more than 600 billion euros year by year to finance the energy transition and the transition to a carbon neutral economy. And if you think about this, this amount of money that needs to be financed, you need to adapt to that. So you clearly need to have a, an understanding where are these investments going to happen. And what we are seeing right now at the, in the first phase of sustainable finance, we saw a lot of ESG linked um, lending and ESG linked bonds. That means there were certain KPIs, key performance indicators that were linked to the lending. And if the, um, uh, if the borrower achieves these targets, if the corporate achieves these targets, then they would get a benefit and a beneficial refinancing rate, uh, interest rate on their loan. This is changing more and more to use of proceeds financing. So, so certain projects, you see project finance rising, where it's a dedicated use of your proceeds, be it in battery storage, be it in infrastructure, in in, in all kinds of circular economy uh, issues. So you see that the project that gets more and more on the project level, that is very important. There are more sophisticated trends also on the, on the, the question, how do we integrate nature into our financing system? How do we can put a price to nature? And how do, can we link the protection to nature and incentivize the protection of nature in standardized um, uh, in standardized financial products like bond issuance, for example. That means we need to work together with development, with countries. We need to work together with uh, the development, financial, uh, uh, development financial institutions. We need to work together with NGOs because all of this needs to be also supervised. We need the credibility in these projects. So there are new trends where we integrate nature and definitely the carbon compensation market is, for example, a very important market because we will see that credible carbon compensation will has to, have to play more and more a role in our financial system because eventually it's about integrating the external cost of doing business, the environmental cost, the harm that is done, integrated in the cost structure and, and by doing so, setting the right incentives for the consumers and for the corporates. And this is the most important. And we are not very far in, in the world, in our economies, to integrate the harm we do to the economy, to the environment, the harm we do to, to the climate, um, to integrate this into our pricing system. Because if we did this, then the people would take different decisions because the prices would be different for certain products and there would be a high incentive to, to invest into more efficient and, and more um, uh, less emission um, intense um, uh, productions. And this is what we need to achieve. And this is the biggest trend I see. And we are just at the beginning of this. Thank you very much for your time, Mr. Eichendorf. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Springer. Thank you. Thanks a lot. And it was a pleasure to be with you.